Hi, my name is Greg Ciola. I'm the president and editor of Crusader Magazine and also the uh, founder of Seven Lights Nutritional Supplements and Health Products. I want to share with you today an interesting story that uh, I've been publishing recently in our newspaper and one that I want to put out here on the internet um, in a video to let users and, and customers kind of understand this product a little bit more. And it's, uh, it's about this product, actually two products, but kind of one, one harmonious message called BioCare and uh, BioCare 911 uh, Skin Emergency Restoration Spray. Um, this story started about 10 years ago when I got introduced to a gentleman named Mark Hessling. Mark's uh, somebody who was involved in the environmental sector, uh, pond and lake remediation, and uh, his job was to take uh, dirty, polluted, chemical water that was dead, something like you'd see here in a swamp or whatever, and clean it up. And what was so unique about what Mark and his team would do is that they would clean the water up by stimulating the good bacteria. So what most people don't understand is that bacteria are prevalent everywhere. They're in your digestive system. People in the health industry understand that. Um, they work on restoring probiotic health in the digestive system. They're in the soil. Farmers understand this because there has to be proper uh, soil microorganisms so that the plants take up the right minerals from the ground and process the plants and the growth of the soil properly. Um, they're in water. Everywhere in water is loaded with bacteria. But what's interesting is that what few people have really uh, understood until recently is that bacteria also covers our whole body from top to bottom. Your, your body is covered in a sea of bacteria, both externally and internally. In fact, without the right bacteria, you wouldn't even survive. And so <clears throat> getting back to Mark's story uh, briefly, what was really interesting is that Mark and his team would clean these dirty ponds and lakes up by working with the bacteria. It wasn't going in and dumping chemicals in there to try and kill stuff. And that's kind of what's going on with pharmaceutical companies and modern medicine today. They have a kill mode mindset that the way to treat things is to kill everything. So you put antibiotics into your body to kill bacteria. You put all these topical things on your body externally to kill things. And that's really not the answer. And, and I think that there's a, a paradigm shift that's happening in the supplement industry and even in the medical community and a lot more research that's even coming out to validate it. And that is that the real answer is working with nature, working with the bacteria. And so uh, what was fascinating about Mark's story is a lot of these guys were working with him uh, in the early 2000s with this environmental product, which by the way is 100% all natural, no chemicals, all 100% uh, natural derived ingredients, things like aloe and uh, coconut oil and kelp, um, is that they would handle the product. They weren't wearing gloves and all kinds of biohazard suits because it was an all-natural product. And so certain guys that had nail fungus and different cracks on their hands or things would work with this product while they're out in the environment. And they found out, hey, man, my, my fingernails look better. Uh, or, gosh, this wound I had or this rash I had on my hand went away. And it kind of fascinated Mark. And so he uh, started handing samples of this stuff out to other people in his family. And he found out that, man, this stuff really works. And that's kind of a whole other story. And I'm, I'm going to do a separate interview with Mark to kind of get to the bottom of that. But in a nutshell, uh, the same way that bacteria works in water is the same way that it works on your body. In fact, our bodies are, are just swimming in bacteria from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, internally, externally, and throughout the environment. Without the right bacteria, nothing works. They are the, the microorganisms that process all life. And so uh, to have a product that would actually work on, on stimulating good bacteria, um, it really caught my attention. So when I met Mark, I interviewed him a while ago and I said, man, this is really a, a, a unique concept that I haven't heard before. We need to get this out there to the market. And so that's kind of what led to the development of these products. Um, I've sold them under some different labels over the years. But uh, recently, we have just uh, formulated and come out with them under our own label, BioCare. Um, <clears throat> let me just talk briefly on, on bacteria. This comes from Wikipedia. It says, bacteria are vital in recycling nutrients with many of the stages and nutrient cycles dependent on these organisms, such as the fixation of nitrogen from the atmosphere and putrefaction, or putrefaction, sorry. <laughs> 
According to one of the researchers, you can find microbes everywhere. They're extremely adaptable to conditions and survive wherever they are. There are approximately 10 times as many bacterial cells in human flora as there are human cells in the body. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, more bacteria than cells in your body. With the largest number of the human flora being in the gut flora and a large number on the skin. This is the important thing. A lot of people have missed this. It's all over your skin. If you looked at it under a microscope, you would see all kinds of bacteria. And this is why I like this product and this is why I want to share this video because the answer to skin health, which is primarily what I'm going to talk about here, is working with these organisms, these microorganisms on your skin. This is the vast majority of the bacteria in the body are rendered harmless by the protective effects of the immune system and some are beneficial. Uh, in industry, bacteria are important in sewage treatment and the breakdown of oil spills the production of cheese and yogurt through fermentation and the recovery of gold, palladium, copper and other metals in the mining sector as well as in biotechnology and the manufacture of antibiotics and other chemicals. So that's just a, a little brief write up on that. Um, there's a story that we did uh, about a year and a half ago. It's published on uh, our website, The Seven Dominoes of Disease. And in that story, I talked about one of the biggest reasons why uh, there's a disease epidemic today is because we're not getting the right minerals in our body and one of the biggest factors causing mineral imbalances are the introduction of fertilizers, chemical fertilizers and, and, and uh, pesticides. What the problem is with these, it goes right back to this whole thing with the bacteria balance again, is that um, when you apply all these things, they, they destroy beneficial microbes in the soil. These beneficial microbes that are in the soil attach to the roots of the plant and in a healthy soil with a healthy plant they're involved in helping to absorb and pull the right minerals out of the ground and into the plant. The same thing happens in your intestinal system. When your healthy flora is in balance and working properly, flora processes a lot of key nutrients that you take in from your diet or through supplementation and they help to process them and get them into the body so that they can get into the cells and keep you alive and keep you healthy. So in this article that I ran, uh, Seven Dominoes of Disease, I actually quoted a study uh, from the National Institutes of Health and this is connected. It says, heavy treatment of soil with pesticides can cause populations of beneficial soil microorganisms to decline, according to the soil scientist, Dr. Elaine Ingham. If we lose both bacteria and fungi, then the soil degrades. Overuse of chemical fertilizers and pesticides have effects on the soil organisms that are similar to human overuse of antibiotics. Indiscriminate use of chemicals might work for a few years, but after a while, there aren't enough beneficial soil organisms to hold on to the nutrients. For example, plants dependent on a variety of soil microorganisms to transform atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates, which plants can use. Common landscape herbicides disrupt this process. Uh, I don't really want to cover the whole story. I'm just doing a little synopsis here, but basically, uh, in, in a nutshell, the problem is you put these things on the plants, you spray this stuff, you treat the, the soil with these fertilizers, the microorganisms die, the plants aren't as healthy, and then people aren't as healthy because these plants are not getting the right nutrients. So, how does that relate to uh, skin health? Let's, let's talk about uh, skin cancer for a second because skin cancer a hundred years ago was relatively uncommon. Now I, I know that there's always been disease and, and different issues, however uh, in every sector of our medical system today and, and the disease epidemics that are going on, we look back and can see that almost everything was a lot less common over a hundred years ago than it is today. So it's the same thing with skin cancer. Here's a story from uh, Science Daily, April 2nd, 2012, and it says, dramatic rise in skin cancer among young adults. I mean, what's causing the skin cancer rates to go through the charts? It says, even as rates of some cancers are falling, Mayo Clinic is seeing an alarming trend, the dramatic rise of skin cancer, especially among people under 40. According to a Mayo study, uh, researchers published in April, this is uh, young women are the hardest hit. 
We anticipated we'd find rising rates as other studies are suggesting, but we found an even higher incidence than the National Institutes than the National Cancer Institute had reported using the surveillance epidemiology and end result database. And in particular, a dramatic rise in women in their 20s and 30s. So skin cancer is off the charts. Why? Why can't people make a correlation between what's happening with what we put on our bodies? I mean, let's take an example. Okay, you wake up in the morning, get in, you're getting in a hot shower, and you sit there in, in, or a bath, you open up all your pores, and most of the people in America and around the world are taking showers. You think your water's clean? There's thousands of different chemicals that are in that water that you're taking a hot shower or a bath in. There's chlorine, there's fluoride, there's all kinds of other petrochemical based chemicals that are in the water. I mean, it's astounding. And the EPA knows this, and there's certain allowable limits that they have. But the fact is, you are now bathing in this stuff. Well, if antibiotics that you ingest orally can have a, a negative impact on the human gut flora, then what's going to happen when you're sitting there soaking in hot water like that that's full of chemicals? Okay? Do it day in and day out, two, three times a day. Guess what? It's going to have an effect on your skin. It's going to have an effect on, on the balance of this bacteria that's on your skin. And then beyond the water, okay, how many people are using antibacterial soaps? One of the most common ingredients in those products is something called triclosan. Triclosan kills good bacteria or kills all bacteria, whatever. So it might seem like a good thing. Oh, it's an antibacterial soap. It's great. It's going to help me. It's going to protect me. But guess what? It's causing a negative impact on your skin. And even if it's not an antibacterial soap, uh, most of the other soaps that are on the market are toxic. They're trash. Uh, I mean, they're loaded with chemicals, animal fats. I mean, most people don't understand that a lot of these shampoos and soaps that are on the market today are just byproducts of the uh, of waste from the uh, rendering industry. After they kill all the cows and the animals, the pigs, they take their carcasses and they process them and they get these oils and fats out of them that they use and sell to the cosmetic industry. That's what's in your lipsticks and your hair and all this stuff. So now you're taking a bath and a shower in that. You're bathing in toxic soap. Then you're applying toxic deodorant, uh, using toxic laundry detergent, applying all kinds of other things to your body. And guess what? You're, you're disrupting your entire microflora of the exterior of your body. And then people wonder, well, how come I have a rash? How come I have eczema? How come I have uh, this problem that won't go away? How come this wound won't heal? Uh, how come I have dry, flaky, scalpy hair? You know, it goes on and on and on. And this is why I'm so excited about these products and what they can do for you and why they're really an answer to a whole lot of problems that people uh, are, are needing to get treated. So... Um, back on the, the skin cancer, and, and I'm going to bridge this in because that's all those other products, but then there's another problem. How many people are using sunblock? Most sunblocks are loaded with chemicals, and I personally believe that they're also one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people are seeing a dramatic rise in skin cancer. Uh, I think that there's some studies out there that are going to really start proving that. And, uh, you know, again, go back 100 years ago. How many people got skin cancer? Was it around? Yeah. But to this level, no. So what's causing it? And in addition to everything you're doing that I'm talking about externally, then add on everything that you're doing internally. The dyes in your food, the preservatives, the, the GMOs, and all the other stuff. And you add that on to everything else that people are doing externally. You wonder why cancer internally and externally on the body is just blowing out through the roof. Okay, here's a study. Do sunscreens cause skin cancer? It says, we've all been warned that sun exposure can cause skin cancer. Granted, the ultraviolet rays do have the capacity to induce skin cancer, but this is only half the story. The fact is that skin cancer was very rare 100 years ago and is still rare among many populations, even those that spend all day in the sun. Our health, our health authorities have tried to blame this on the ozone layer, but the numbers are just not adding up. For example... The incidence of skin cancer in Norway had increased by 350% for men and by 440% for women during the period 1957 to 1984, while the ozone layer had not changed during this period. The big irony is that the ingredients in sunscreens may cause skin cancer. Statistically speaking,